Hi guys and welcome to Mentimi's YouTube channel. My name is Alan Arvindan. I'm a CFO charter holder and congratulations. We are almost at the end of the Titan business valuation. And today what we're going to do is since we most of our schedules are ready, right? Now it's time to link each of these statements. Now the challenge which actually comes is since because we've been doing all these schedules separately, there are good chances that sometimes the linkages might go wrong and that will relate to balance sheet not matching, right? So these are the two issues that we're trying to focus in this lecture. So let's get started. Welcome to the next session and uh, today now we'll try to link all the three financial statements and I also save this as a separate sheet so that you are able to actually access this. So I'll just call it as linking statements. Okay. Now since we've already forecasted we've added all the values now. Now it's time to actually get the cash flow statement in place because that's going to give us the balancing figure and it's going to tell us whether there are any errors that we need to look at. So net profit before tax, let's go to income statement and look at our PBT values, PBT values, sorry, right? And again, we don't need all of them. So only the ones which we have actually forecasted. So income statement depreciation, we're going to add back because it's non-cash expense. Right, uh, and the finance cost we're gonna add back because we're gonna reduce it in the financing expenses. Right, so let me just see if I've actually linked G. Oh, sorry, so I need to just make this as K because K is since F524. Okay, so finance expenses. Uh, I have added back. Now let's look at the changes in working capital accounts, which I always say in case of asset values, you do last year minus this year. And in case of liabilities, you do this year minus last year. It directly gives you the changes in the values of assets in terms of cash flow. Okay. So receivables in sense in assets, so it's 2023 values minus 2024. That's not much change because we've actually considered the receivables to remain mostly similar right okay so this is unnecessary only this much then we go to inventory again since an asset account it's going to be the last year minus this year values right and uh, then we come to our payables which is going to be this year minus last year so since trade payables is going to be liability so let's go to liability this year minus last year okay and finally the tax paid so we can get a subtotal here to get the values until now Okay, and let's get the tax figures from the income statement. And then let's get the subtotal for the cash flow from operations. Okay, now capex, we've already done it in cash flow statement, so we're gonna take the capex values from here. Make sure to make that as negative. Okay, and uh, nothing else actually in the investing. So we're just gonna copy that. Just the capex values that I was going to affect. And then for, finally, uh, remember there was uh, the gold loan that we're talking about, right? Changes in gold loan. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just see whether that values are where they have actually been put, where if they've actually been put in the operating or the investing values, right? So let's just see whether gold loan actually exists in the operating side. Uh, yeah, so there is, right? So what we can do is we just find the changes in gold loan values. It's gonna be liability, right? So this year minus last year. Right, so that's our gold loan and uh, nothing much in the financing expenses apart from 
the finance cost itself which we had added it back so now we're going to reduce it here so net cash you know operating investing and financing addition together opening is closing of last year and then the closing is nothing but opening plus the changes in cash in a given year okay so this is net change in cash this is opening this is closing right so we can quickly run a check sum whether to see if there is any error and we can clearly see there is a mismatch of 14,360, right? So I'm going to give you a chance to actually try to assess where your balance sheet might not be telling. And then I'll come back and tell you where exactly the error is. Again, as discussed, I hope you spend some time trying to find what the actual reason for your balance sheet not telling was the reason, right? So I have given you time. So if in case you were not able to find out, of course, you can look at the balance sheet error sheet itself. But the majority of the problems which uh, were were not actually conceptual, but majorly some typo errors, right? So first of all, uh, you could have gone and noticed that in your trade payables calculation, most of the places what we did is trade payables and inventory and also all the working capital accounts. Basically, we had by mistake linked the J column because of which the values were not matching, right? So that I have corrected. Sa same thing was uh, same issue was also with inventory which i also corrected again uh, and also the same issues were with trade receivables as well where also i have made the correction right that was one error the second error which uh, you might be able to quickly find out was that in the asset schedule what we had done is we had by mistake linked the j values rather than the k values because uh, remember 23 values are still already there we didn't have the 24 values and uh, when we were linking it uh, the net calculation that we had done initially was cross minus uh, K, uh, plus this uh, capex minus accumulated depreciation however since uh, these capex values that we are trying to derive have not considered all the other variations in the calculations it was wise to use the net values so net values plus the capex minus the accumulated depreciation or the sorry the depreciation for the specific year will give you the right values when you do these changes and you link the net values in your balance sheet your balance sheet will automatically tally now obviously i've not linked the cash values but when you look at the checksum error of the cash flow statement which is the difference between the ending balance of cash minus k73 which is nothing but if you look here k73 is the total uh, checksum at your balance sheet itself so if you minus this value minus the ending balance this should ideally be zero before even linking the uh, ending cash. So now when I'll go and I'll go to the cash section, right? So again, be mindful that you are linking for this correct year. So now you go and link the ending balance for K and then your balance sheet will tally automatically and there will be no error spending, right? So that was the error. I thought of giving you one uh, you know, a perspective it's always wise to try to do it yourself once and then check on the errors. Anyways, even if you found, uh, if you are not able to still find out, my recommendation is to just refer to this sheet once and you should be able to pinpoint your errors, right? And most of the cases, uh, the way to look at balance sheet errors is to start looking at conceptually rather than just going and finding what the error is. So first is always remember that the balance sheet will not tally because of the things you have forecasted. So the things that you have forecasted is inventory, trade receivables, other equity, gold loan, trade payables, right? So whichever is marked on yellow, those are the things which have actually changed because that is what you have forecasted, right? And any differences or any calculation mistakes that you've done on these forecasted values is what will cause the balance sheet error, right? And that is what we did while finding out that finally we came to realize that, okay, in the property plant and equipment forecasting that we've done, right? Uh, we had not selected the correct, uh, you know, net values. In fact, we were trying to derive it using the gross values, right? So do not make that mistake. And, uh, you know, that's how you actually find out the balance sheet error. I hope this session helps. I'll see you again in the next session.